Welcome to our daily wrap for Embedded World 2023. I'm Nitin Dahad, uh, Editor-in-Chief of Embedded.com, and I'm here with my colleagues uh, Anne-Francoise Pelle from EE Times Europe and Sally Ward-Foxton from EE Times. Hello, Sally. Hello, Anne-Francoise. Hello, Nitin. Hello, Sally. Hello. So, um, we're going to talk a little bit about what we've uh, sort of seen today uh, on day one of Embedded World in Nuremberg in Germany. Um, Should I turn to you first, Sally? Uh, what's been your highlight today? So first stop for me definitely is go to the Renaissance booth to see um, AI running on the brand new Cortex M85. It's his first time seeing AI running on this M85, which is absolutely brand new um, in an as yet unannounced product from Renaissance. So they just have a label over it saying M85. We don't even know anything about it. Um, but they were running um, plumerized person detection model, person tracking model, um, which they can do in 77 milliseconds, so 5.9 frames per second overall. Um, it was super cool just to see that up and running. Um, that's definitely the highlight of the day for me. That's actually quite a good thing because last year they actually announced it and I, I went to talk to them about yeah, that. So yeah, now yeah. actually seeing it running, yeah, um, exactly. that's good. And Francoise, what's been your highlight? Uh, well, actually I decided to give a flavor to my first day. I interviewed automotive um, um, companies in a, um, Alliance and Foundation. Um, so uh, my first um, interview was with the MIPI Alliance, and we ex actually we discussed the difficulty to integrate more and more sensors, lidars, uh, cameras, and the need to have fast and efficient networks um, to um, um, well, and um, so they have just developed a new um, working uh, working group, and they're working on a strategy. Um, to, to make it more efficient, so, um, safe, and to gather um, an ecosystem around it. Um, I can tell you more after if you want. Well, we'll definitely read about it in any times, um, definitely, but an embedded. But um, the, uh, the thing for me was uh, really around, um, was this, the big thing was boards. Uh, there was the, I, I interviewed Dev Singh of Qualcomm uh, on their new launch of the integrated, 5G integrated IoT processors um, with, uh, software updatable uh, features, um, so and running on uh, four different um, OSs, so um, uh, embedded Linux, um, Windows, Android, um, and Ubuntu. So I think yeah, those were the key things. But the other big trend for me was um, everybody's talking about edge AI and vision, but in relation to things like um, auto industrial automation, uh, automated mobile, automated uh, mobility robotics. Um, and um, and then we, I also talked to uh, companies like Greenhill Software and, and LDRA on software tools and, and testing. And you know what sort of intrigued me was push button uh, uh, conformance reports from uh, companies like LDRA, but also the you know, the need, which I don't think we talk too much about, uh, around um, tools and debugging and analysis, which is actually uh, quite an important area especially in uh, safety critical and mission critical uh, applications and both of those target automotive autonomous vehicles and um, uh, aerospace and defense and specifically uh, i think they were both showing the nxp 32g gold box um, and the, their their artosses and this test systems running on top of that so those were some of the things that uh, there's lots more i mean uh, is there anything else you wanted to talk about sally so for me this show it's all about tiny ml so I'm here looking at demos, seeing people's person detection, people counting, voice recognition, voice ID demos, and I've seen quite a few today. Um, I think the overall trend for me is really seeing what people can really squeeze out of a resource-constrained environment. So whether it's adding a tiny accelerator to do this kind of work, or whether it's squeezing more from the model, or just really making it run more efficiently on this really, really tiny hardware. It's super cool to see what people can do. Um, I actually ran into Pete Warden, uh, from the Useful Sensor, he has a new company called Useful Sensors, and they make these little hardware modules with a sensor and a, you know, a, a microcontroller with some intelligence there, with the model then there on the board, which they sell you. Which some of the stuff they're working on is super cool. They had a cool demo, and they're working on a few more as well. So I'm excited to see what they can do. For example, well, on that basis, I, I think I also uh, talked to a company called My Voice AI, and uh, he was showing me how um, the um, they basically got AI for speaker enrollment and uh, verification on a sentient uh, Nordic and Arduino platform on the board in 400 kilobytes 
uh, footprint and each voice uh, print being just one kilobyte. So it's for things like access control and, and voice control. So I think it's around the same sort of uh, applications. But um, the other one I think I was seeing was RF um, uh, uh, energy harvesting oh, uh, yeah. and light harvesting, a company called Atmosic. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we've, we've all met them in the past, but uh, uh, they, they moved on from uh, remote controls, which they are into a lot of remote controls, to now diversifying with it, um, uh, ARM 33 uh, Cortex-M based um, chip, which basically is targeting now more of the IoT play. Uh, so en energy harvesting in the IoT using Bluetooth profiles and RF um, profiles with yep. Air Fuel Alliance. Oh, well, still on the automotive side, um, we are actually seeing a big change um, from the hardware-centric architectures to software-centric architectures. So we, we, we see the advent of software-defined vehicles. Um, that's in that context that I talked to at the Eclipse um, uh, Foundation and um, to Michael Pledge. Um, it is really growing. Again, it's he's calling for a change of mindset, um, and he's calling for more open source um, architecture, more open source development, and a new collaboration model. Um, and um, w um, what is really essential is to um, um, to respect the uh, open source definition and open source initiative and not to make it a buzzword and to really work together. Um, they call it a meritocratic um, organization. And um, it's, it's really there for the benefit of the consumer, the benefit of the automakers. And um, because um, it's, we'll see uh, software usability, we'll see um, lower cost uh, of ownership. And so it's really beneficial to all of us. Um, my last thought, um, there's a little bit about automotive, but not only, um, I would like to say uh, gr congratulations to uh, Green Wave Technologies because they won the hardware um, uh, award, embedded award, so congrats. Well, that's good. Well, um, I think uh, that's all from us today, and uh, we will come back to you tomorrow with day two. Uh, keep tuned and uh, talk to you tomorrow.